We see your iPad, Alan, but we don't see you. So um, I'd like to, I hope Pat Gervais gets on with us today. He said he had a meeting at, uh, the, on the hour. I was assume, assuming it was this one. Huh, okay. Well, he, he just, just finished the rosary okay, too. We're huh? Well, we wanted Pat to lead us in the rosary. Hey, Pat, can you, uh, can you uh, start us off with a, a decade of the rosary? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, let, just, we'll do uh, an Our Father and, and, then, and then the Ten Hail Marys, okay? Okay, sounds good. For those of you who don't know, Pat uh, leads a, a daily rosary and posts it to our man cave. And I just want to remind everybody we're recording this. We're going to post it to the man cave afterwards. Maybe we'll post it more broadly. We'll see how, what's happening. But we think a lot of people need to see men gathering together to encourage each other time like this. So go ahead, Pat, start us off. Sounds good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, daily and give bread. us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, for now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, God pray for us sinners. Now is the hour of our death. Our death. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Holy Mother, Mother of God, 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 pray for us sinners. Now is the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Yes, As it was in the beginning, so is now, and ever shall be. Ruled without end. End. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all Lead souls to heaven, to heaven especially, especially those who are most need of mercy. mercy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So good to be with you guys right now. A lot has changed since the last time we uh, talked. I don't think we talked since I've been in Hawaii, have we? We talked just before I left Florida to come home. So think that's true. Our, think about what's happened in the last... Uh, four weeks and three days <laughs> since I came, since I got home. And I just want to check in with each of you. This is, you know, this is our time, you know, the cellular structure of the body of Christ is made up of something called the domestic church. Each, each, um, each household is like a cell, you know, in the body. And so it's time right now, you know, that we've, we've heard that we've been told that this is the time of the laity, um, that the laity needs to really step up. In this last, in this last, uh, these last hundred years or so, and even more so in the last twenty years, and no nothing more, more than at this very moment in time, when I live right next to the Catholic Church, and Cindy and I usually go get to daily mass, and I can't receive the Eucharist, and 
and it's right next to me. I can look down right at the altar from, from, my, from my condo on the 24th floor. I'm looking right down at the, where the altar would be. So I'm just curious what, uh, what, what's going on in your, what's going on or what are you, what are you doing within your own households as far as um, establishing your own home altar? I, I, I should start off with this. I heard this, uh, I heard this, this, uh, this meme one of my friends sent me. They're asking a man a question, A or B? You got two, tro- two choices, A or B. During this quarantine, you can be at home with your wife and your child, or, and he starts yelling, I, I take B, I take B, I'll take B. He doesn't <laughs> even know what it is, right? So, so, so but we, um, we have a different response. And so I thought I would just ask each of you to talk about what you're, what you're doing in your own household to bring hope and to, uh, and to take this as an invitation an opportunity to bring your family closer to God. You want to start out, Peter? Well, for me, it's um, being mostly retired. It, it was uh, the first little bit of it wasn't that much of a change. Uh, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I, the biggest change I did was the other day, yesterday, for yesterday. Uh, we took one of the motorcycles that I rarely ride. I took it for a longer ride. I figured, you know, my face is covered and I'm covered and social distancing and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, it was a good thing to do. Um, so that they, but after a while it got to, uh, you know, I, I really miss the interaction with, with friends. And, and I kept on thinking, we usually, today is Saturday, we go to a vigil mass, uh, 99% of the time. And, I, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm going around, well, I've got to get ready for mass. Oh, no mass. Uh, and cause all the, the churches are closed. And so it's, it's, it's a, it's a big change. The, the good thing about it is uh the it, different dialogues albeit electronic but uh, there's been different dialogues that i've had uh electronically and telephonically uh that i normally wouldn't have had uh with uh family and uh with some uh um, work things too with my my part-time gig that i'm doing now in motorcycle your, your motorcycle uh safety training yeah. so we had a uh, um a, a zoom meeting actually this afternoon so that was kind of neat uh, probably one of the best sessions, learning sessions that I've had in a long time. So that that opened up a whole new world, I think. The, the, so the, there's different things. I was talking to my daughter today. Uh, she's a, um, a clinical um, uh, therapist, and she has changing her practice to doing a lot of it online. And and she's opened up her. Uh, we had a nice dialogue actually, and and uh, uh, her political views and mine don't exactly coalesce all that well. And we got, uh, we started talking better and got and came together a whole lot better than we ever had in a lot of those, uh, a lot of those things too. So that if you look for it, my point is, if you look for it, uh, I think there's an opportunity now to, to, uh, uh, to have a whole bunch of uh, good come out of this because we're slowing down and maybe we're doing things that we normally wouldn't have done otherwise like have those conversations and have those uh, opportunities to, to talk about things that, that matter that you don't often take the opportunity to do. Hey, hey why don't you uh, post up your Zoom things to our man cave? Can we, so we can sign up and take them too while you, if you're doing Zoom. Your motorcycle safety classes, right? This was for uh, on the instructors on how to be better instructors. Oh, okay. If, if you're an instructor, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> Dan, what are you, what are you, uh, experiencing during this time, Dan Barda. Yep. Um, both my wife and I um, are a mandatory teleworking, so we've been been home together. Uh, she's actually was wanting to retire this coming December and really wants me to retire in February next year. So it's giving us a little taste of what it might be to be at home. Um, it, it, it's interesting. I, I'm actually in a, in a family here, which I'm really the only one that's a practicing Catholic. And I'm really trying to encourage my wife to come back to church. Um, and and what, what she sees, though, is my practice in, in my mm. faith. So she sees me doing um, rosary most evenings, not all, but with, with Pat. And uh, mm-hmm. she likes to see a, like a rental movie at night. But um, we have to wait till rosary's over to do that. So, so it's, it's, you know, um, 
you know, I do. So, I, so you're yeah. putting, the, it, that's so cool. So you're leading by example. And yeah. you're putting that first. That's all I could do. I mean, I can't force, I mean, I do encourage her when, when, when there was mass, I always encouraged her to come with me, but um, I, I was able to get her to go to fish fries, but those are now canceled. So uh, but that's really cool. That, that thing different. of going to fish fries, that's just all part of it too. The interaction. And do you hear uh, God we saying? Actually, and we actually sat next, next to one of our deacons at, at the uh, the last fish fry, which was kind of nice. <coughs> Hey, I, I do want to share something. Our director of liturgy looked at the root of quarantine, and apparently it's Latin for 40 days. So it's kind of appropriate for Lent. That's right. <laughs> this is the time of repentance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill Rushmore is actually here, and he we're not sure. Uh, if he has the um, the coronavirus or not, they haven't tested it, but they've asked him to be quarantined. You've been you've been quarantined for about a week now, right, Bill? Yeah. Well, I got sick Sunday, and then I got the news Tuesday about the the people at work that had it had it. So when I talked to my doctor, she said just said stay inside for two weeks, let her know if things get worse. So I'm pretty fortunate now to just have the mild symptoms. I don't have anything too serious yet. No, no fever, no uh, trouble breathing, anything like that. Just a cough, headache, and a sore throat. So just ordinary virus that we always get. So it's not not too big of a deal. And how is that affecting your your uh, time of prayer or your time within your domestic church within your in your own home? Well, <coughs> interesting. Hasn't really changed things for me a whole lot. I mean, I work from home two days a week anyway because I have a long commute. I watch EWTN daily mass on. Uh, for you know, on TV, I record it and watch it at night. Now I'm going to Sunday Mass. I mean, mm. EWT, and that's that's the different difference. And I guess also more and much more intensely now because now I'm like you know trying to. That's the only way to beat the anxiety that I have right now. You you have anxiety right now? Yeah, a little bit. I well, I have anxiety because you know am I sicker? But I'm also very anxiety because. My kids, my oldest is a police officer. Mm. My daughter just caught called up in the National Guard, and I found out that mm. my son is going to Afghanistan. I probably won't get to see him before he goes. You've got a lot to pray about for each other. Yep. Uh, Mark Kilgore has arrived. Hey, Mark. Hey, How Mark, um, um, can you zoom in your camera more? I don't know if it's possible. So there's just about an inch above your head. We're trying to get closer. We're actually recording this so we can share it with the men in the cave who haven't been able to make it, you know? So... Okay. In TV land, you try to make it so it's just an inch above your head. There you go. That looks better. Uh, there's someone that's listening in, one who, who, who of I, V6, and I forget who that is. I think that's from, I think that's probably Sean Church that's here with us. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, hi, guys. Hi, Bear. Hey, Sean. Aloha. How are you guys there in the Philippines? Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, you know, they, they've been... The, the things that happen in the U.S., um, they've already been doing here. It's like they're one step ahead of it outside of, you know, when, when Trump announced the, that he was blocking, uh, uh, banning flights in from Europe, with, with the exception of the U.K., the, the day after that happened, the President Duterte over here came up with a huge, long list of all these countries that were banned from coming here. And now every day it's something new. Just recently they're doing this day pass thing. And I had to, I had to go down to the barangay, they call it over here yesterday, and explain to them, because I'm, I'm right on the borderline of uh, where my, my children are staying at their um, mom's house, and which is also where I'm working at this other job I picked up. So I, I'm not allowed to cross over the bridge with this day pass thing that they're giving out. So I had to go down to the barangay and explain my situation, that my children are over there and I, I need to be able to cross the bridge. So... They gave me a form that shows that I live where I live. And my driver's license shows that I live on the other side where I'm working. So I won't find out, though. They're not enforcing it until tomorrow. So um, well, you, I'll, you, I'll find I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sean. I'm so sorry. Oh, that, that's pretty much all. I mean, that's – you have a question, Bear? Well, you're in touch with what's been happening here in Hawaii. I, you know, it's in, I, went yes. out surf, I went out surfing because you have a – a tour type business here too, helicopters and skydiving, right. I think, and other things. And I guess, right. are you pretty, are you pretty much shut down in Hawaii now? Or are you still? Uh, that's a really good question. You know, I, I, I have this thing called fair Harbor where I can go on and look at like my, the Paracel company as an example. Well, as of tomorrow, there's no schedule up until like the um, uh, mid April for, for parasailing. So they've, and they've it's turned also, it off. Yeah. 
they've turned off some of the tours and I don't, I don't know specifically each tour. I can only, I can only gauge the shark cage and the parasail with the fair Harbor. So I can call and ask, but I know that the helicopter tour went out today and, and stuff like that. Um, and, but the skydiving was shut down as of uh, yesterday um, until April 1st. So that's another one. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they're kind of cutting down, you know, they're, they're, you know, it's like I said, e each day something new happens, even in Hawaii, obviously, right? Where well, you know, I, I'll tell you what, I went out surfing today. I mean, we live right on the beach and basically cross the street and go into the ocean. They have yellow police ribbon all along the beach. So you're not allowed to be like on the grass, the 10 or 15 feet of grass before you get to the beach. Uh, you can go to the beach and get on and, and go in the water, but there's like, they're, 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 there's trying to stop as much traffic as possible. And Sean, it was so cool because I was out in the ocean surfing with basically just local, the local people because uh, all of the surfboard uh, rental places and, and uh, lessons are shut down. And so you see people out there like Winnie and other guys that are always teaching and never get to surf, just have uh, out surfing. So it was a joyful time to be out in the ocean, you know, but it's, it's pretty right. alarming when you don't see the, the streets are kind of... Um, the, the tourists are gradually less and less and less. So that's what's happening here. Cindy and I have been spending our time. We, lot, we walk along the beach, but we're on the, right on the water, and we'll pray our rosary when we're, when we're doing that. So we get in the ocean, and we, and we, uh, and we walk along the beach. Uh, there's, a gra there's a nice place under a palm tree where we sat yesterday, and I had a cigar, and Cindy did some yoga. So uh, we're able to get outside. But um, tell me, uh, let's see who we talked to. Uh, is it Kent is up there? Kent, what's happening in your in your uh, in your home as far as what's go going on with you? What's in, in the domestic church element? How how you guys are going to uh, bring the Lord into yeah. the situation? Well, last night we did the Stations of the Cross here together. Wow! So uh, uh, that that was really good, uh, something different. And then tonight we went ahead because we usually go to the vigil mass, and so we went ahead and did the the mass readings together. We each, each each member took a different reading and did that, and then we did the prayer of spiritual communion, which uh, I think maybe Pat you posted that maybe in the man cave uh, this week or something. And so, and then yeah, you, tomorrow we'll our local parish is going to do a Facebook live of the mass. At, at, so we'll. We'll watch that, and, and hopefully, uh, if the kids aren't, aren't up, that they can watch a recording of it, or we can watch a recording of EWTN or something. But we're trying to keep things going. But it's different than us, different for us because uh, we usually go to the vigil on Saturday night, you know, and go out to eat afterwards. So mm -hmm. just having to to adjust. And uh, I think everybody sounds like just listening to all the men here talk. It's kind of in the same situation, you know. Uh, but it is, it's but, cool. I hadn't thought about doing the Stations of the Cross. I mean, I'm just so disconnected, you know. That's a great idea. Yeah, I think someone that. posted that somewhere, and that's where we thought, well, we'll, we'll do it, you know. And uh, luckily, there's lots of apps that have it available, all the readings, and you can just go right through. So, Can you post yeah. one of those apps to the man cave? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do that. Laudate is the one I use. A I lot love Laudate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's got the Station of the Cross on there. Okay. So. Yeah. Mark, Mark Kilgoro, how are you? You guys doing? Oh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, and actually, both of us, we're still working. My wife works for the power company, and so got to keep power going. And I'm a truck driver, so got to keep supplies going to everybody. And um, things are going pretty good. Um, probably, probably the best thing for us is is our old parochial vicar who now is up in the mountains of Colorado by himself has been doing daily mass and, mm. uh, on, on Facebook for us. And so all of us that, that follow him have been doing daily mass with him. It's the first time I've done daily mass in a long time. And I've been really enjoying it. Uh, it's been really helping me with my prayer life. And, uh, you know, just, it's to me, I, the, the, it, when they first started saying they were canceling masses here in Colorado, all I could think of was, you know, all those people down in the Amazon that they only get mass once a month anyways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, spiritually I feel connected to them. You know, it's, we can do mm -hmm. it. It's just prayer time and stuff. Um, our, our governor has been pretty drastic about closing things, but the mayor of Denver is even worse. He, he closed restaurants and everything for the next two months. So, yeah, we're shut down here for 
two weeks, but it'll probably be extended. You can go yeah. and get a carry out. Yeah, same but here. You, can't. you know, my wife, Cindy, she's a very wonderful woman, but she has one huge uh, issue, and that's Starbucks. She has to have her Starbucks. <laughs> and she's got me hooked on it, too. But luckily, there's a Starbucks right down here, and they're still battling, and and uh, and if and we have another locally owned coffee shop right next to us too, so we're still getting our afternoon coffee. So. Yeah, but it's it, it, what what's going on with you and your in your family? Are how are you or how are you able to uh, help them not be worried, or, or how do you share hope and faith? Um, you know, I, I, and we both, me and my wife, both work together pretty good about you know it, it's in God's hands. Um, I was talking to Dave about somebody about you know. Are they going to come up with a, uh, a cure for this? And, and and in my eyes, you know, God gave, there's a scientist out there that God gave that ability that to, to find cures and find uh, uh, whatever it's going to take to get us to do all this. And, um, you know, we, we both kind of feed off of each other. And it, our, our lint has been pretty good uh, rosary consistently throughout you know, every day with each other. And it's been really good. Probably, the, probably the, the most concerning thing we have, our oldest son is in France right now. Oh, is, was he, is he living there or is he was on vacation? So, so he, he's been in a teaching program where he teaches English to French students. Where is he? So Southeast of Paris in a little town called Sans. And, um, he uh, he thought he was going to stay there and be around his girlfriend. Well, his girlfriend's in Paris, and he's 30 miles away and can't go see her, and all of his roommates left, so he's sitting in a two-bedroom apartment by himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what Cindy and I did is we bought um, – early on, I, I wanted to anyway. I got uh, – I, uh, I ordered some jigsaw puzzles you know, like yep. two weeks ago. They're just about to arrive. But someone had left one downstairs, so we're putting one together. You know what she, you know what she did? I'm organizing so much my jigsaw puzzles, so I have all the same color for the right border, all the flat, you know, the border ones. The edge ones. And I get up and leave, and then she put them together if I did all the hard work. <laughs> and then we're playing backgammon, and she's and I, I taught her how to play backgammon, and I haven't, I, I have not won a game. She just keeps beating me at backgammon. Yep. How about you, Ted, with your with your with Jamie and with your sons? Well. Um, Jamie's still working. I'm still working. The, uh, Theo is actually on spring break right now, but with his school, they've been doing a, uh, Facebook live where they gather the kids all together in the morning. They do their prayers, the pledge of allegiance, do their announcements. Uh, and then they have them sign in on their school stuff on their iPads and start doing school. Um, so, you know, for us, it was no no big deal because we've been you homeschooling do, for the first seven years anyway. So yeah, I was now saying we're homeschooling again. <laughs> yeah, your son had just transfer, transferred over from being homeschooling, and now he's homeschooling yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, oh, well, I'm back to what I know how to do. So it's no big deal for him. Everybody else is kind of, you know, the, the memes are going around that says that, oh, homeschooling's going good. We had one student late today. The parents, the teacher was drunk or whatever. You know, it's all this silly stuff. But our house is just get your work done. And then we'll go out and play and do something. So they've been riding their bikes, going to the uh, to the local park. Uh, we got to start working on some paddle boards that we've got. We got to redo them so we can go out paddle boarding. Uh, we swim in a pool. We play around. If they're able to help me during the day, if they get their work done in time, they can come help me do some work. So you know. I know you, Ted. You're probably not doing anything different as part as far as your your family prayer time because you you what what because you've had that so established, but. Tell us a little bit about that and how do you, what do you, how, how are you sharing encouragement with them? Do they ever express worry? Not really. We, we don't, they know what's going on, but we don't worry about it as much. You know, if, if anything, Jamie's the one that's more susceptible to this virus because of her, you know, she just, she has a low immune system. So we just kind of make sure we're not doing anything. We're not going anywhere that's going to affect her. Um, me and the boys, we could, catch it and probably it'll probably run away from us do the Chuck Norris thing it'll go quarantine itself um but you know we just we're doing our same thing we make sure we, we I love listening to Pat's rosary when I get a chance if we're not doing something uh if not I'll listen to it later with the boys we lay there we do our prayers in the morning we do our uh you know we, we read the daily readings every day off of Lavate. 
Um, if I don't want to read them, I can play them on the, on the, uh, their podcast. Uh, you know, we just, we, not much has changed except for not going to church. We used to go to church three times a week. We're not going, we, but we've got priests out here that are doing a live broadcast. They're doing it from their house or they're doing from a, you know, from the church by themselves. And we just catch one of those every, at least every day. So there's a chance every day to go to mass and look at it, you know, and be there. You get your spiritual communion and go on. Um, that's what we got to do right now, you know. Yeah, I haven't they seen you guys. They closed all of our beaches, so we can't go to the beach anymore. We went fishing the other day. Um, I'm supposed to be at Sebring right now watching a race, but that's not happening. I'm, so I'm sitting out in my front yard with some citronella candles. I got my, you know, my divine mercy behind me. There's, there's Mary back there. Praise um, God. You know, <laughs> it's, it's our Catholic house. People drive by and they know we're Catholic. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you guys are filling me with so much joy. It's just so beautiful. Um, I want to say, and, Pat, I, and I got my yeah. long ride home shirt on too, by the way. Hey, you know, I haven't seen yeah. you watching my Ocean Sunrise Catechism because it's about two o'clock when I do it. I mean, now I'm doing it in Hawaii, yeah. so it's not sunrise for you guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, it's it's mid afternoon, and it's like right in the middle of my busy day, so I'll watch it later on in the afternoon. No, you yeah. always post post your comments, though. We we like. We're hearing right. from you guys. Uh, I know Peter. Peter tends to come on just at the end. He catches that I'm on. But uh, it's well, a beautiful. Peter and, are, Peter and I are taking off to Maine. Did you know that? We're right, Peter. We're going to Maine to get uh, toilet paper. With Pat. Yep. Yeah. Well, Pat. Pat sorry, yep. Pat and I are going to. We're going well, to. Know, we're, bringing the, uh, yeah. we're bringing the Pat boys for security. We're going to take off and go to uh, Maine to get toilet paper. Are you really, Pat? Are you really going to do that? You're not really going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have a whole different take on that. I have been uh, breeding soft white kittens for a while <laughs> soft i'm well, talking found, about soft if you, fur if you, if you go to home depot and you get in the stall early you're good because they stock up <laughs> oh home depot hey so we went yeah, early this, we went early this morning to go to our safeway store they're open all the time but when we got there at 5 30 in the morning they weren't open there's because of what's going on they're going to open at 6 a.m. And, uh, and, you know, here in Hawaii, maybe they're doing that where you are too, where for our kapuna, our older people, they get to shop at a special time from 7 to 9 or something like that. Are yeah. they doing that where you guys are? So yeah. I asked the guy, so is this just for our kapuna or can anybody come in? Because I'm wondering if I can come in. And then I realized I'm one of the old guys. <laughs> I can go in. Um, I want to say Pat for last, though, because I feel it's important to get the update on the toilet paper situation, uh, <laughs> but also because he's so connected with everybody because of his rosary. Uh, Tony, uh, how about you guys? Uh, well, By the way, stand up and show them your shirt again. Oh, yes. And where did you get that, Tony? Uh, from your store. I got it as a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah, that's on our Deep Adventure store. We also have... Uh, we're gonna we're putting up a, a a flag. I'll probably get it done today sometime. The uh, trust in God flag, but that's a really cool flag. That that one you're wearing. That shirt we have got so many cool stuff in the web store. So um, let's see. So uh, where were we? Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my wife's been working from home, so um, but you know I've been doing a lot of prayer and reading and trying to catch a mass either from EWTN or one of the other ones. Um, Bishop Barron's Word on Fire, they've been broadcasting a mass every day. And um, and our parish priest just did the vigil tonight, so we just sat around and watched that tonight. But I've just you know, it's been trying to do as much prayer and reading as I can and just trying to lead by example to the family. <laughs> how many of you guys are, are – are, uh, I know what you've all told me, but how many of you – um, are not going to work right now, are not leaving the house to go to work. You, are you retired or work at home? I'm not retired. working right now. <laughs> uh, uh, how many of you are, let's put it this way, how many are leaving the house to go to work? Just raise your hand. I'm, I'm working. Okay. So I'm two, working. two out of our 10 that are here. Three, three, three out of our 10. Oh, four because of Ted. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and I, of course I'm working at, my CPA land over here, my next Tesco over CPA land. <laughs> I have to leave the house to do work at other people's houses, but that's what's kind of nice. No, that's they know, not. They know, they know that's good. I, I can go work in their house. I got floors to put in next week. Why don't you just tell them you're working from home and send them instructions? 
<laughs> well, we we tried that. Our, you know, our maid sent us the. She said she couldn't come in, so she gave us cleaning directions on how to do it. I know. Still that, wanted us to pay her. I know you posted that, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Got, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's hear from Pat. Pat, what's going on out there? Everybody's been calling you, do, Pat Gervais, um, for everyone that's, because we're recording this, we're going to post this to the man cave. And if it's okay, we may post it to our, to all of our social media. Um, Pat Gervais, what's the name of your, um, your site again? It's the Catholic biker. Uh, it's, on fa- both on, on, it's on Facebook and on YouTube, both. And no, uh, just, every, every evening at what time do you do the rosary live? Uh, seven 30 give or take like tonight i tried to get it in a little bit early so we you know i'd have time to make it to this meeting uh if something else is going on it might be a little later but 7 30 is the target much like uh your 7 a.m was the target when you're out on the east coast it's always 7 a.m wherever i am well, <laughs> yeah, well sometimes, sometimes it's 7 10 too yeah i know <laughs> you love that because you don't have to be like oh no i gotta do it at seven o'clock you know you just but pat you do it every day don't you yeah, I do it every day, seven days a week. Um, I, I'll say at least 350 days a year. There are a few days during the year I end up uh, being busy and not being able and to. I, yep. I think you've been doing it for, a, a, what, a year and a half now? or Yeah, it's been a year and a half. And uh, I remember about what, three months into it, you were saying, I'm not so sure if I should do this. And I said, oh, my gosh. I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll so... tell you what, uh, the, ros- the evening rosary was uh, just a little background on it. Uh, October is the month of the rosary. And I never realized it until a year and a half ago when mm. I heard that our bishop had uh, said October, month of the rosary. And so, well, okay, yeah, let's try something. I'll do it you know, just for the month of October. It felt good. I rolled it into November, December. Like you said, about three months into it, I'm going, well, you know, is it really worth it? Since then, it has taken on a life of its own. There was one night I was driving back from Orlando, uh, you know, back here to Titusville, and actually got a phone call from my friend Sean, wanted to know if I, I was okay because I hadn't been on to do the rosary yet. <laughs> yeah, that's what you do to me. If I don't do my ocean sunrise, I hear from you or Ted, like, you okay? But <laughs> um, uh, the rosary Catholic bikers, Catholic biker. Yeah. What, what are you, you know, I remember when I was, I saw Peter this summer too. I was coming in from DC, uh, you know, filming long ride home and gone to Cleveland. And I had probably one of the most horrendous spiritual attacks I'd ever experienced that day. And, uh, going from, uh, leaving from the Cleveland area, I think it was, or, or the day before, uh, going into Steubenville. No. And then arriving in Cleveland, it was really hell. And, uh, I walked into the lobby to check into that hotel and I see Pat leading uh, people in the rosary. And it's just like, oh, I'm safe. I'm here at home. I'm okay. Everything's going to be yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. I can just imagine what other people were thinking. They walk in and they see 20 bikers sitting around in the lobby praying the rosary <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. But it's powerful spiritual weapon. It, you know, and if you're doing God's will, you do. People say, oh, do you ever come under spiritual attack? And I was probably wrong to say it the way I did because I always say, uh, no, I'm not under spiritual attack. I'm on the attack, and I'm just right. facing some resistance. Amen. Whenever we do a long ride home, it's 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 amazing. All hell breaks loose. But then, you know, God, uh, God, uh, you know, is victorious. Pat, what are your what are people saying to you? What kind of prayer requests are you getting? Uh, getting a prayer, a lot of prayer requests for uh, people that are in the service industry. You know, hey, uh, you know, pray for my daughter who is a waitress at a restaurant or, uh, you know, for the, medic, for the nurses and the doctors that are dealing with this all the time. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of prayer requests, not so much for themselves. People don't seem to be stress, overly stressed out and concerned about it. But uh, tonight I had uh, one gentleman that uh, requested prayer for uh, his financial problems as soon as possible. So it's, uh, I think I'm seeing some of the uh, impact of what people are worried about. People are losing their jobs. People are out exposed to the public and their family members are worried about that. You know, one of the uh, Catholic cross bearers is actually uh, her and her husband. I don't know if you remember uh, Jack and Crystal from Cleveland. 
Mm -hmm. They came in from Massachusetts. Anyway, they've started uh, watching the Rosary live every night, and they're sharing it out to their friends. And uh, what started off as like two or three people tuning in to watch the Rosary has now swelled. I'm getting, you know, 100, 200 views on the Rosary every night now. I think by the time Lent is over, uh, you'll have thousands. Uh, it's it's Pat Gervais. His uh, site is Catholic Biker. Biker or bikers? Catholic biker. The, the Catholic biker. On Facebook and on YouTube. He prays the rosary every night at 7 p.m., which his time, which is, is Eastern time. So 7.30 p.m. I'm sorry, 7.30 p.m. Yeah. So because, Pat, you're the voice of Long Ride Home now, you, you do some of our skit narration, and you're the voice of my radio show, The Bear Wozniak Adventure. Do you think you could uh, lead us in – could you actually uh, – get out the book Deep Adventure as we've been reading through that and just kind of, let's just kind of put things into, let's get some traction on the virtues. Sure. And we call him the voice. I'm still trying to figure out where you get that from. <laughs> hey, I wonder why I call him the voice. Probably because of my beautiful face. <laughs> no, you have, you have a great, you have a, you, you, we got to get you more TV gigs, man. <laughs> you're, you're, oh people, yeah. I've, I've got the face for radio for sure. No, you got you got yeah, that exactly. I think I think you've got that that something that you know, one in a million faces. We got to get. We are well. You are a cast member of Long Ride Home. Come to think of it. Okay, so why don't you uh, tell us what what uh, page you're reading from? Okay, we are on page ninety six, and we're 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 going to be showing uh, posting this to social media. So that's the book. Um, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And for those who are interested, you can go to our website, deepadventure.com. There we go. Everybody's got one but me. Uh, so, you know what I love about this is Kent Keithley's drinking a beer. And I love that because I love men. You know, I like, I like, I don't, ah, and Dan's having wine. What are you drinking? I've got, uh, I've got a margarita. You got a margarita um, that you can be, a, you know, this, this sort of version of the man that has to be some kind of neutered male in order to love Jesus is, is BS. So you want to read, read for us then, Pat? And sure. after this, I'm going to go for a walk with my wife and have a cigar. I don't know if Peter's uh, or anybody else is today, but okay, go ahead, Pat. Okay, this is the start of chapter 17, The Ancient Path. One of my heroes of the faith is the cigar aficionado, cigar lover, an atheist turned Catholic, G.K. Chesterton. He contrasted the rational or sad virtues of justice, temperance, prudence, and fortitude with the exuberant, even unreasonable virtues of faith, hope, and love. He wrote, the Christian virtues of faith, hope, and charity are in their essence as unreasonable as they can be. Charity means pardoning what is unpardonable, or it's no virtue at all. Hope means hoping when things are hopeless or it's no virtue at all. And faith means believing the incredible, or it's no virtue at all. Cheston opened that justice, prudence, self-mastery, and fortitude are all about restraint, moderation, and duty. Living a life based on these qualities involves discipline instead of freedom. On the other hand, he thought of the three theological virtues of faith, hope, and love as the fun virtues. With these, there's no holding back. You just go for it. No need for moderation or restraint here. You never have enough faith, hope, and love. Chesterton enjoyed paradoxes, and he certainly saw them in the, in the three theological virtues. We're to have faith in the unseen, believing in a God that can't be measured by our physical eyes or minds. We are to love the unlovable and maintain hope in hopeless situations. To the world, the thought of clinging to these paradoxes seems crazy, but Chesterton saw these virtues as a vehicle through which we can have life and have it more abundantly. The Catechism says, the human virtues are rooted in the theological virtues, which adapt men's facilities for participation from the divine nature. For the theological virtues relate directly to God. They dispose Christians to live in a relationship with the Holy Trinity. They have the one and true God for their origin, motive, and object. Infused with the theological virtues, the four human virtues draw us into greater intimacy with God. 
So we start our journey into the three theological virtues by looking first at faith. Our faith is the cornerstone of our spiritual lives. Without it, we are lost at sea, vulnerable to every changing tide and strong current. The word of God tells, every, tells us over and over that the Lord is near the faithful no matter what. Jesus says incredible things about the power of faith in uh, Mark 11, 22, and 23. Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. Faith can literally move mountains, part seas, and set us free. Not long ago, I headed out for my beach workout. I walked the mile and a half to the other end of Waikiki Beach, near the harbor entrance. I had walked to this same spot nearly every day for more than a decade, but this day something hidden and secret was waiting me. The ocean floor is rough in this area, and it's tough to work your way through the broken lava rock and coral fragments to get to the deeper water. Navigating this path is more challenging than walking barefoot through a dark living room strewn with Legos. Surfers and paddlers tread carefully here to get through the shallows so they can paddle out. As I was making my way, an older, an older paddler stepped off his one-man outrigger canoe. Flipping it up on his shoulders, he easily strolled right out, of, right out of the water without looking down or wincing in pain. How was the paddle, I asked. He responded with a glow of mastery. It was good. I paddled up to Diamond Head and back. I couldn't help but admire his unflinching walk across the jagged terrain. Looking down at his feet, the very low tide showed, allowed me to notice something. All of the stone shelves and broken coral had been clearing in a one foot wide ancient path in the ocean floor that had been smoothed out by centuries of flowing water. The narrow but easy path led directly out into the deeper water. So it is with our faith, with our faith. Why tiptoe our way around, flirting with the latest pop theology, self-appointed spiritual guru, or mortal, moral trend? Why not the well-worn ancient path that the great masters of our faith followed before us? In the Catholic faith, faith we hold the scriptures in one hand and the catechism in the other. The catechism is based upon the written and oral tradition of the church passed down from Christ and the apostles and their successors to help us properly and more deeply understand the Bible. The church has proven the catechism, has provided the catechism, so that we can more easily seek God's reason and revelation. We can read the writings of Anathesis, Jerome, Augustine, Irenaeus, Aquinas, and Teresa of Avalon, just to name a few. The insights of scripture and the catechism flow like water over rough stone. They have carved a path for us, smooth and narrow, that leads us to the deep waters. Let's wait there then, Pat. Okay. Take a break there. A lot, I think that there's a lot to chew on. You know, there's another place here, uh, maybe Sean knows, uh, on the way from uh, my house to that area where the, the, they had cleared out the stones, there's an area... Um, where the, 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 the Waikiki Sheraton is, where the infinity pool is, just north of there, or I should say right. um, uh, Eva from there. Um, right. There, there's, a, there's an opening uh, in the reef that flows out from there where it's sandy bottom that goes all the way out to the open sea. It may be 50 to 150 feet wide, you know, here and there. And I often right. wondered, I'm and I used there. to ask, you know that spot, do you know there's yes. a fresh? Did you know there's a, a freshwater spring right there? Are you serious? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I used to always like to dive in there because I always felt the water just felt so good. And what it is is right there near the beach, there's an underwater spring that bubbles up there, and it's because uh -huh. of that fresh water that that has flowed out and it's carved that it's kept the coral from growing because it wants salt water, and there's that natural channel through the reef. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about Catholic teaching, that fresh water, that ancient path. Uh, if you just uh, let, follow it and go out into the deep, uh, so often, um, uh, I don't know, we, we, I remember when I had left the church for a while and I had, we had ex beautiful experiences in non-denominational churches, but I just, 
got to the point where that song, is that all there is, kind of kept coming to me. Like, I want something more. I want something deeper. My, 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 uh, mentally, I wanted to know more. And you know, the church is, uh, John Paul II saying the two wings uh, that help our spirit or soul are fide, uh, you know, eratio, faith and reason. And so the rich teaching of the Catholic church, that ancient stream that kind of gets the Legos out of the way, and clears that path, I think is so, so essential. Peter's got kind of a grin on his face. I can tell everyone here kind of knows what I'm saying. Dan does too. Uh, can we say, anyone want to say anything about that? I definitely know about getting the Legos out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to move them all the time at our house. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of crazy. So. No, I know like, one of my friends had a child and, you know, he honored me. He, he said, I'm going to name my child after you. And I go, wow, that's so humbling. He said, yeah, but I need for you to, na- to change your name to Lilo so I can name her after you. <laughs> but I always, wanted to cha- I always wanted to get his home address because I wanted to send him a whole big old box of Legos <laughs> for his kid. Um, well, um, let- go ahead. I like the, the insight that faith, hope, and love are the fun virtues, that there's no holding back for that. I, it, it just reminds me that a lot of people have kind of accused Catholics and, and other Christians because they feel that there's so many rules or we're sort of slaves to the, the teachings or the, um, maybe the laws. Um, but I guess, I mean, this just reminds me that we really are free, you know, and, and this is sort of a, a part of that. So. Isn't GK amazing? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the virtues, the four cardinal virtues of justice, self-mastery, prudence, and fortitude, those are kind of discipline. But when it comes to faith, hope, and love, you can just let loose. Just let loose. And that's why he said orthodoxy uh, lets good things run wild. It's like a, a, a wall of truth that allows good things to run wild. Peter, do you, can you give us a final comment before we leave? I got, I just a feeling you got something for us. No, just, <laughs> just enjoying, just enjoying the, uh, the uh, camaraderie. And, and uh, um, I, I, I do think it's important that more that now than ever and, and turn faith, hope and love on full blast right now, um, because you never know who you're going to impact and, um, you know, keep, keep those keep those channels of communication open with whoever throws in in whatever name throws in your head at that time. Act on it immediately. Uh, he, yeah. Right now, people are people are hurting, and they're they're uh, they just need whatever is put on your heart uh, at that moment. Act on it. We want to remind people you can go to deepadventure.com to get more involved in the in, in our ministry. Find out more about Pat Gervais. Pat, I need to, you to give me a link or something so I can post it to my website. But Pat Gervais, the Catholic biker. Um, and um, Peter, do you want to say one thing about why people should go to our, our, our website and men should go to our website and join the man cave? This is, this is uh, one of our every two or three or four week uh, video Zoom meetups of Bears Man Cave. Uh, secret Facebook group you can't join by going to Facebook. You have to go to deepadventure.com. Peter, you're always like, I think, the biggest uh, proponent of, of the man cave. Can you share uh, 30 seconds and we'll wrap it up? I don't know what you want me to say other than you know each of these uh, people that are on here tonight know at least one or two other people that could benefit from this. And maybe that's, maybe that's what I was referring to that was on my heart a minute ago. Uh, whoever is whoever that name that you're thinking of right now, call them within the next 24 hours and tune them into this network, and uh, you may just save their spiritual life. Yeah, so many of our members they will they will put something in the man cave. They'll post uh, they'll post someone's name that they they want to have join, and they do that in the membership area, and that doesn't work uh, because they have to go to the website to sign up. So the way it works is to email them a link to the man cave sign up, you know, go to our website, go to the man cave sign up sheet, and then just copy the URL and, and text it or, or, or message it to them somehow. Cause if they go to our Facebook group and, and you, you invite them, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. But if you, if you get personal with them and copy them and say, you got to join this, that would, that would be great. 
Um, and if that doesn't work in the, in a few days, then uh, repeat the, the communication with the wife and it'll happen overnight. There you go. Um, I was meeting with the man, uh, Ke Kevin Phillip, who's a new member of the Man Cave. He's, uh, he has the Regina uh, men's, men's Conference there in Canada. I'll be speaking at in October. And I met with all the men like this, uh, some of the men yesterday. And, I just, and they go, well, how do we get from being, a, being 75 to 300? Because I keep talking about the 300 men of Gideon. And I said, you have to compel them to come. You can't be passive about it. Compel them. Like Jesus said, go out into the streets and compel them to come. So maybe each of us here could uh, find, uh, I think, Ted's brother or no, I forget who, who I'm thinking of. But, but you know, think about who, who could benefit by being part of the man cave. This is the time that they could probably really benefit and compel them to come. Yeah, I have a gentleman in mind already for sure. Tony, I, the, la the last catechism you did, Bear, uh, you know, I, I haven't missed one of your catechisms. I share every single one of them along with Pat's rosaries. But he went on there and said that, you know, we spread the word we really needed at this time and stuff like that. So um, I, and he's, I think he's already joined, um, you know, um, but I don't I, I got to get him to come on. Well, well, I think I don't know that he joined. I think he got invited to join, but I'm not sure if he actually joined because you got to give them the link okay. to our website that's the way people join us via the website okay yeah I'll go to deepadventure.com and, and click on that little big red stop light sign that says don't enter here and then send them the man cave link do you want to take okay. us out in in prayer let's see uh i don't want bill to pray because we got to pray for bill right now <laughs> ted scarpino take us out dan how are you doing are you continuing with your chemo are things getting better or have you suspended that Actually, it was suspended about five weeks ago. The, um, the side effects actually were uh, clinically too extreme, and the doctor felt it was more harm than good. And uh, they did you know, get all the cancer out, so this was just protecting me from potential stray cells and things like that. Um, but uh, so I actually, in the last five weeks, I got my strength back, my immunity has come up, so I, can, I think God did that so I can face this. Uh, yeah, just in time. This, this flu, yeah. Yeah. Pray for us, Ted, and pray for the people that are wa that are watching this and viewing this. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we ask you to just keep your man keep your uh, graces upon us. Let us have the faith that we'll get through this. It's not just in one little area; it's worldwide. Our families are the most important thing, along with you. We need to just be there for them. Take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Take care of your friends. Give them the, let them know you have faith. Let them know that God is with you. Be bold. Uh, courageously live the gospel. Just mm. be, be out there. Be there for other people. Mm. Whether they think they need it or not, they need it. Just be there for them. Uh, we just ask for blessings for all those prayers that are in, inside of our hearts that we've expressed outside of everything. And anybody that's going through something, whatever it is, just, we just ask you, Lord, to help us out. Get us through this. Get everyone safely through the next whatever time we got to be here. In the name of the Amen. Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. The scripture Amen. verse comes to me, Who have I in heaven but thee, O God? There's none upon this earth I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail me, but you are the strength of my life and my portion forever. Amen. Can I brag on my boys for a second real quick before we go? Well, why would this time be any different than any other time ted well you know because they're so special and partly you'll you'll appreciate this you know <laughs> we had our we had our men's conference in february and we had 650 men at the conference we had two guest speakers but both of my boys spent the friday evening setting up for the conference helping out they served mass they ser they did help with adoration they helped in the ministry room came back and then cleaned up the end of the day uh, they spent about eight and a half hours doing something for other people. And I just can't be more proud of my boys for what they did. They gave up their Friday night and Saturday to spend it for somebody else. So, Yeah, we saw pictures of them helping serve mass. Praise God. Yep. That goes back to the domestic church. That's what it's all about. Okay, Amen. guys, we love you. And, and keep posting to the man cave and, uh, and share Pat's uh, rosary, too, and my catechism. Okay, now, now, re real quick, if I can, I pose, a friend of mine sent me a little uh, photo of steps in order to uh, make mass, a, a virtual video mass, 
more realistic. I recommend everyone checks it out. Post it. As post as, it. Post it. I, it's already posted in the man cave, but I just wanted to remind everyone. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Okay, you guys. Ahui hoi means until we meet again in aloha. God bless. God Viva Cristo Rey. Viva Cristo Rey. Aloha.